Welcome to Interpol World Television. I'm here with Mr. Douglas Tang from the NEC Corporation. Douglas, can you tell me a little bit about uh, NEC's relationship with IGCI? Okay, uh, NEC is a major contributor uh, to, the, to the Interpol's uh, IGCI. Uh, we main, mainly contributed uh, to the construction of the Digital Crime Centre, uh, or IDCC in short. So in this IDCC, we provided three main components. The first one is the Cyber Fusion Centre, that promotes uh, interaction, information sharing uh, during uh, investigation. Uh, the second one is the digital forensic lab. So that puts together a set, a set of tools that will help the law enforcement to extract digital evidence and preserve it and to process the investigation. The third one is the training. So we provide the technical expertise uh, and to gear up the law enforcement officers in the Interpol to make use of the tools that we provide. Yeah. So we hear a lot about um, cyber crime um, and the press seem to uh, focus on it a lot but how much of it is really hype and how much of it is real and what are NEC doing about it? I would say um, the concern is real, the threat are genuine, okay, uh, it's not uh, something that is uh, hyped up uh, and the, the witness or, or rather the, the evidence to this is uh, the fact that the, the Interpol decided to establish an institution called the IGCI and hosting the Digital Crime Center to address this threat. So the threat is real uh, and I believe uh, NEC is contributing uh, in its own way to, uh, to this, uh, this movement. So I, I believe that uh, we should uh, work uh, towards this uh, addressing the, the, the threat in a very positive way. Uh, and besides that, uh, we shouldn't trivialize okay, the threat of it or the risk of uh, uh, cybercrime. Uh, what is reported out there is probably the tip of the iceberg. So, what do NEC see as the sort of the, 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 the top five threats that there are, and where do you see them going over the, ne the next few years? Well, if we confine our scope of this discussion to, uh, to, to the in law enforcement, I think the threat of a cyber crime would include uh, things like uh, uh, financial crime, uh, the use of APT to compromise the uh, systems, uh, data breaches, that means uh, leakage of uh, confidential or sensitive information, uh, or simply bringing the systems down. Right. So uh, these are some of the uh, key risks or the threats that are on top of uh, the, the law enforcement minds. But within this threat, you know, how much of it is electronic coming in or how much of it is the human being inside the organization causing, causing the difficulty uh, from within? Yeah, the, the human is definitely in the loop, right? In uh, perpetuating the crime, uh, the human will be using technology to uh, advance his uh, motive. So uh, the two goes hand in hand uh, and I would say it's almost uh, equal. Uh, but because of the advancement in the technology, uh, this, this capability for the human to uh, further his, his criminal intention gets uh, higher and higher, right? So the intensity also gets str uh, stronger and stronger. So the need for the Interpol to put together a force to really work together internationally to cooperate with the private sector as well is very important. And you, what do you think Interpol World, um, yeah. as, a, as a conference and exhibition, is going mm -hmm. to contribute to um, the understanding of, of uh, what NEC are, 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 are providing here today? Well, I think uh, this is the inaugural, uh, Interpol is the inaugural uh, uh, conference uh, and also the exhibition. What's unique about this is that first it deals with cybercrime in a very focused way, next it brings together the public sector and the private sector and get them to interact. So for the private sector, it's an excellent opportunity for the private sector to learn from the public sector what are their concerns, what are their challenges, so that we can, the industry can better configure itself and to organize itself to serve the public sector better. For the public sector, 
well, it's also good for them to be exposed to the newest capabilities, the defences that are available out there, and to gear it up to, uh, with a better equipment to defend against the threat of cybercrime. Mm. Douglas, on that scary note, thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much.